We're here at the 21st Croy here in Boston, cold Boston, Massachusetts. Yep. And we're here with Sunil Sullivan, who is with the Johns Hopkins uh, University in uh, a medical school in Baltimore. And you are doing work in India, yep. your native country, and you are interested in, your, the work you're doing is actually in prevention, treatment, the whole package, trying yep. to get, doing a study to kind of look at uh, one-stop shop. So right. tell us about that, how you, how you put this study together to begin with. So we, I've been working with uh, HIV infected populations in India since 2002. Mm -hmm. And so what we've realized is, as most people have seen in India, is the HIV prevalence overall has come down, the burden of infection has come down. But if you look at it by risk group, the overall decrease is primarily being driven by a decrease in the heterosexual populations. Mm -hmm. But if you look at injection drug users and men who have sex with men, the prevalence is still high and sentinel surveillance shows that it's at best stable, maybe increasing. Mm -hmm. So we've been working in terms of treatment, and one thing I've realized, trying to treat drug users in Chennai, which is in the south of India, is they need several services. Mm -hmm. So they need opiate substitution, they need needle syringe exchange, they need HIV testing, treatment, and the way service is currently being delivered in India, as it is in most parts of the world for drug mm -hmm. users, is you have to go to a different place for each thing. So what we sort of did at our small clinic in Chennai was, we had peer health workers, we, in, in, we integrated HIV testing into the same center. So they would be mm -hmm. tested and linked off to a doctor who was also at the same center. Mm -hmm. And then we would send them with a peer health worker to the government center, pick up the ART. The peer health workers would continue following up ART. So we basically tried to bring most services into the same center. And we saw that people were doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. And then we started working with groups in other parts of India and we found they were all facing the same problem. And as we go into this era of combination prevention, where everyone is doing combination prevention studies, mm -hmm. the populations we felt were left behind were injection drug users and men who have sex with men. Because most of these studies are focused in Africa, which is heterosexual driven epidemics. Mm -hmm. These are the fastest growing epidemics are among drug users in MSM, Central Europe, Eastern mm -hmm. Europe, Central mm -hmm. Asia, India. Mm -hmm. right? So we designed the study, which is the cluster randomized trial, among men who have sex with men and injection drug users in India. So we've just finished our baseline, which is a sample of 27,000 people, 12,000 wow. drug users and 15,000 men who have sex with men, and it's distributed all across India. Mm -hmm. And so we're right now in, the, in, the, in the, the intervention phase. So we're working with the government. What we have done is we've identified these clinics, which drug users are themselves comfortable going to, mm -hmm. but currently provide only a, a, a particular set of services, either needle syringe exchange or mm -hmm. opiate substitution. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is we're taking HIV counseling and testing, HIV treatment, and we're also having pure health workers, outreach workers, all bring, bring them all into the same center. So it's almost like a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. And so we are hoping that by bringing all the services drug users need into a same venue, that we would increase all outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if they would come in there for needle syringe exchange, someone would ask them, have you been tested for HIV? Mm -hmm. and they would say no, so then you refer them to the HIV testing center, which is right on the same site. Mm -hmm. So if they're tested and they're positive, we're like, do you want to see a doctor? Because what happens right now, if you look at the treatment cascade, is you, you, you lose people at every step. Mm -hmm. like, you, and like the biggest loss is between testing and linkage to care. Mm -hmm. So we believe that if you bring both these services into the same venue, that mm -hmm. you would minimize that drop. Mm -hmm. So this is our overall concept. Is, is the, these now, you've, you've taken a clinic which is already established as a, a drug uh, drop-in center. Drop -in center. And you've made that become more HIV uh, right. in, integrated. Uh, do you have people who might come there just for anti-HIV drugs or no? So there may be, so we haven't specified that only drug users are allowed to come to this clinic. Mm -hmm. If the general population wants to come into this clinic, they're more than welcome to come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. But government centers in India, as in most other parts, have free ART delivery. Mm -hmm. So most non-injection drug users and are very comfortable going to these government centers. So yeah. drug users have a problem going to the government centers because they have their drug using needs. Because that's against the law? Or it's against or the law. Some yeah. of them feel stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Some of them, it's not just government centers, even private hospitals. Mm -hmm. like I, because we've referred drug users to private hospitals with surgery and most times they get turned away saying mm -hmm. you're a drug user, why are you wasting your money? Right. Okay. So it's, it's this mentality they have towards going to other facilities. Whereas you have a facility where they're already comfortable coming mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to make them go somewhere else, we're trying to bring the services to them. Right. No, it sounds like a perfect, uh, perfect opportunity to, to grow and improve. Uh, you saw the Bertozzi presentation this morning. Yes. Makes sense. And, makes and yours makes the same kind of sense. Right. Yeah. 
better outcome, better efficiency right. and productivity uh, for the dollar spent. Right. Yeah. So how is this funded? Is this, did you, do you need funding or do you already so have the funding for the services anyway and they put them together? So these, the, the two, so the services themselves are being delivered. We are the government. So we're working with the government. Whatever services are not available, we're paying for them. So mm -hmm. we are, this, these two studies are funded from two separate grants from the NIH. Mm -hmm. One is from the NIMH and one is from NIDA. Mm -hmm. And so all the monitoring and all the trial outcomes are being funded by the NIH, mm -hmm. whereas the service delivery itself is minimal cost. We're, we're also doing a cost effectiveness analysis, which is essential in this day and age. Is, you saw from the morning's presentation. Mm -hmm. So in the end of the day, we want to be able to say that, fine, so you have a desegregated service, and this is how much it costs you to prevent one new infection, this is how much it costs you to get one person suppressed. But we are giving you an integrated care model, mm -hmm. and this is how much it costs to find a new person who's diagnosed, this is how much it costs you. And in the end, if it is cost effective, we are hoping that the government would use this model because this seems to be like the last step in India. So this would be the thing, is you'd translate or transition this to the government if, right. if in fact you demonstrate it. It is a cost effect, yeah. yeah. So when, how did, what's the timeline on this, Tom? So we think we should be done in a very optimistic time frame sometime in the middle of 2016. Mm -hmm. So our baseline is done. The, the clinics will be starting up in April of this year and all 11, so we're setting up 11 cities into these integrated mm -hmm. care models. Mm -hmm. So that'll happen between April and June. And then our evaluation will start in 2016, April, and over a six month period. So by the end, by the end of 2016, we should have complete findings on whether this model works or not. And the cost effectiveness will probably come in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to put the cost down as low as you can. Yes. So I, I think where you can, and, and maybe before, are you gonna do interim analysis on this or? So we will be looking at process flow, just looking at number of people who are walking into the clinic, number of newly diagnosed people at the clinic, number of people being put on ART. Mm -hmm. So we can look at what's happening once this integrated model has come into place mm -hmm. versus what was happening before the model. Mm -hmm. And because we really aren't actively tracking participants during this trial, because we want it to be as it would be in the real world. Mm -hmm. Because once the trial pulls out, we don't want people to say that happened only because of the trial, because you were following people. Mm -hmm. Because what happens in most clinical trials is you have so many retention staff, mm -hmm. and each of them follows participants. And the minute the trial is over, uh, you can never replicate that in the real world. Mm -hmm. Well, you, the thing is, you actually have uh, 11 sites. Yes. But there's not just 11 cities that, that are dealing with these issues, right? No, there are more than 11 cities, yeah. I mean, I mean. So we actually sampled 27 cities, and we okay. brought it down to 22. And right. so we have 11 control cities, which are this. Oh, that's what I was going right. to ask you, because I was looking for a control. Right, right. so we do have 11 control oh, cities, which oh, have okay. the standard of care, and then we have 11 intervention right. cities. Okay. That was what I was concerned right. about. Yeah, because so that'll be great. Then you'll be able to show comparison, yeah, we definitely, a real-time comparison. Right. Yeah. Well, this looks exciting. I'm, I'm very anxious to see the results of this. And uh, will you be going to, um, like you say, you'll be doing maybe an interim analysis and maybe one of the other CROIs or something? Or Hopefully. We yeah. will, we'll well, you definitely have to look me up, because I always like to follow up okay, on this definitely. kind of uh, study and because it's, it's, um, it's the kind of thing we, we really need to be doing. We need to, f everybody that I've been, I think if there was one catchphrase right. that I would use this conference, it's work smart, right. efficiency. And, right. and boy, Bertozzi really hit the nail on the head on that. Right. So it sounds like we're uh, maybe going to be a win here. Hopefully. We're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Hopefully Home it's run. cost effective. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you for having me.